Hey everyone, my name is Ohe and in this video I wanted to take an example of a website redesign that I've done to show three ways that you can use analytics in your UX practice. So I'm really hoping that this will help like demystify doing UX research and analytics, which I know can sound a little bit intimidating if you're not coming from a research background. So let's get into it. can do when you get into the analytics of um, your website or your app. I'm not going to use specific platforms here because there are many ways that you can track that. The first one is try to identify issues. So this website that I did the redesign for, uh, they were under the impression that not a lot of people were visiting their website or had difficulty finding um, the information that they were looking for. So yeah, we took a look at their website and then looking at the analytics, it was true that the bounce rate was really high. It was particularly very high for uh, people coming from social media. So here, like you can tell, like it's kind of being a little bit like, I feel like diving into analytics is a little bit like being a detective. So you have pieces of information, you notice things and you're trying to piece it together to better understand like what's going on. So the first thing is, yeah, you get into the analytics and you try to identify issues. So you can look at the bounce rate, you can look at funnels. So what are the different steps that people are following? You can also look at keywords on to how people will get to your website. For this specific website, it was interesting because a lot of people were uh, on Google typing in the name of the website and typing login. So right away it kind of cued me maybe people are struggling to find the login button on that page the second thing which i touched a little bit into is getting more into that identification of causes so we're going to try to find causes for those issues so often just analytics alone does not necessarily give all the information into like of course why people are dropping but sometimes you can start piecing things together like I was saying, like people who got into the website from, for example, Facebook were dropping a lot. So we started looking into, well, what kind of articles were shared um, into Facebook and where were they led into the website? Like, is the information, was the information different uh, from what was shown on Facebook to when they arrived on the website? Or did it make it difficult to do what the call to action was from Facebook? So you can try to kind of like piece things together and to try to understand why people are dropping. If you're looking at a flow uh, or checkout process to buy something, which we did, we noticed that people seem to drop at the second or third step. So we start having like little hypotheses, like is this that specific screen that is really confusing and that's worth looking into that screen and what could make it feel confusing. But right away, we just like the information you get from the analytics, you can start seeing kind of like a story or at least making some hypothesis into why a specific behavior is happening. And the final thing that I'm trying to do, which again, <laughs> I kind of touched into a little bit in the second point, is trying to do triangulation. Again, with my logging example, I saw that the bounce rate was really high. I know this in the keywords that people were googling the name of the website with login. So my hypothesis was that one of the hypotheses I had was I think it's hard for people to find a login. And then through qualitative interviews with people who had never seen the website and just you know getting into the website and say you want to log in, how would you do that? And seeing how long it took people to find it, it was like ha. Well, there we have it. That's one of the problems that people buy one of their product or subscription, then they want to log in and they struggle to do that. So that was one of the issues. It's not always as straightforward. Sometimes you might have multiple hypotheses and sometimes the qualitative interviews will not always point to the directions that you thought. But often with the analytics, it only gives us a piece of information. It gives us information about behavior and facts. You know, it's tangible. This is what happened. The tricky part in research is trying to find why things are happening. And this is where uh, adding multiple methods. And I'll link in the description below a book that I really like in terms of describing different UX 
methods, but this is when uh, adding other UX methods that are more qualitative will be very interesting. And just a final note on that, sometimes we might have an idea of what is the issue or people might say that some, something is the issue, but another thing that's important to note and another limitation of sometimes doing interviews is that sometimes people don't really know why they drop or what influenced their behavior. So sometimes we'll only know through A-B text testing or doing different types of experimentation like that to discover you know, what will improve the checkout process and make people convert more, for example, which unfortunately doesn't give us necessarily a lot of insight into what something, why was the design much better or worked a lot better. So I hope this was helpful. I think these really cover well the three ways that I'm using analytics into my UX work. Let me know in the comments below if there's any other ways that you're using analytics or any project that you've done. I'd love to hear about it. Thanks for watching.